All right, welcome to Psychology 101. This glare from the uh, computer screen is going to drive me nuts. So, history of psychology, you're going to see it on the screen. Yeah, timeline. And uh, we're going to be focusing on William Wundt. Wundt. 1879, he opens the first psychological laboratory at the University of Leipzig in Germany. So, um, this could be considered the birth of psychology at this point. Um, you know, it depends on when or where you first studied psychology, but, you know, uh, doing a little more research, and, um, you know, never really heard much about Wilhelm, uh, typically professors focus more on um, Freud, for example. But Wundt was born in 1832 in present-day Mannheim. So his father was a pastor, um, Lutheran pastor, and his grandfather was a professor and pastor. So it would be evident now, looking at his early life, um, that he'd be highly influenced to investigate the conscious and, um, you know, immensely educated. So, you know, this was also a period in history where there was sufficient economic surplus. And so that, you know, education was encouraged um, and paid for. Um. So, in 1860, Bohr Wilhelm uh, became the associate professor for anthropology and medical psychology um, for Heidelberg University. Uh, he was able to, at this time, write and publish the principles of physiological psychology, which was published in 1874. There are essential themes to his work um, that went on to influence other psychologists, such as Emil Kreplin, James McKean, um, and G. Stanley Hall. Um, Wundt typically conducted experiments on memory, which would be considered today iconic, short-term, and management. Um, other themes included process theory, the psychological parallelism, parallelism and development theory of the mind. So he's credited for quite a bit um, uh, and he's influenced quite a lot of individuals. Um, Stanley went over to America in 1883 and he opened the first experimental psychological psycho, psychology laboratory at Johns Hopkins. John Hopkins. All right. So to summarize one's, one's contribution to psychology, um, he is considered the father of experimental psychology and psychology, uh, meaning the study of the soul. You know, the word's been in use since the 16th century, uh, but its modern use arose in the 19th century. So uh, the key step in this word getting more frequency um, in the medical and uh, philosophy realm was the acceptance that the conscious mental life was linked to the biological processes in the body. So uh, it impl if it, the implications were that the same methods used in natural sciences could be used to study mental phenomena. Um, so in the 19th century, um, psychology acquired a new definition, the science of mental life, both of its phenomena and their conditions. Uh, introspection was developed to expose the mind to scientific research, and for experimental psychology, laboratories began to appear in universities. Um, so one set, one did, one, whatever. Wilhelm separated psychology from philosophy and biology and became the first person to be called a psychologist. His approach became known as structuralism 
he used experimental methods to find the basic building blocks, structures of thought, and investigate how they interacted. So he studied sensation, sensation and perception, breaking participants' observations of objects, images, and events down into uh, parts in the same way. Autonomous would study a body trying to find its um, constituent parts and how they interact. He first studied reaction time, changing stimuli, and then measure how long it took them to respond, inferring that the longer it took to respond, the more mental process must be involved. Um, he developed a process called introspection to inform more about the nature of the processes involved. So, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe for more. Let's we continue our early five o'clock recordings. Okay, bye. Wilhelm Wundt.